Imagine waking up one morning to find your city's downtown submerged in water. Streets turned into canals, homes swallowed by tides, and entire communities forced to evacuate. Not in some distant future, but in your lifetime. Sounds like science fiction? It's not. Climate scientists warn that by 2050, rising sea levels could reshape America's coastlines, putting millions of lives and billions of dollars at risk. So today, we're diving into the most urgent question, which US cities are truly at risk of being underwater by 2050? Before we begin, make sure to subscribe to our YouTube channel for more awesome travel guides, and make sure you hit the notification bell so that you know when we publish a new video. So now, let's cut to the chase. At 10, Houston, Texas. Houston might not immediately come to mind when you think of coastal flooding, but it's one of the most unexpected cities at risk. It is. While located slightly inland, Houston is extremely low-lying, with large swathes of land barely above sea level. Add to that the city's notorious land subsidence caused by decades of groundwater extraction, and the threat becomes real. During Hurricane Harvey, Houston received over 50 inches of rain, flooding homes and highways for weeks. Rising sea levels in the nearby Gulf of Mexico now combine with the region's extreme weather patterns to create a perfect storm of risk. By 2050, chronic flooding could affect major neighborhoods, including critical energy infrastructure. As one of the largest and fastest growing cities in the US, the implications of a sinking Houston could ripple across national energy and housing markets. At nine, it's Boston, Massachusetts. Boston's charm lies in its history, but that history might soon be underwater. The city's iconic Back Bay and Seaport District were built on landfill barely above sea level, making them especially vulnerable to sea level rise. Since 1950, sea levels around Boston have risen by over nine inches, yes, nine inches, and projections suggest a further 1.5 to three feet by 2050. This could push storm surges deeper into the city than ever before. During high tides and heavy rains, neighborhoods like East Boston and Dorchester already experienced minor flooding. Now chronic inundation is a looming threat. The city has developed a climate-ready Boston plan involving flood walls, green infrastructure and elevated roadways. But these measures must keep pace with increasingly volatile climate patterns. Boston, once the cradle of American liberty, may soon be the canary in the coal mine for northern coastal cities. Now to eight, it's out to Honolulu, Hawaii. Honolulu, tropical paradise and climate warming rolled into one. While it may seem protected in the Pacific, the city faces a unique blend of threats. Rising seas are causing saltwater intrusion into freshwater aquifers, beach erosion and damage to coastal infrastructure. Areas like Waikiki, home to the city's most famous resorts and beaches, are predicted to face chronic flooding within the next two decades. And unlike mainland cities, Honolulu's options for retreat are limited. It's surrounded by water, of course. Tourism, which drives the Hawaiian economy, is highly dependent on beach access and oceanfront hotels. As waters rise, residents and businesses face mounting pressure to adapt. Elevated walkways, shoreline reinforcements and seawalls are in planning, but time is not on Honolulu's side. The very thing that draws millions to the islands, the ocean, may eventually reclaim the land it once spared. Next up at seven, it's Atlantic City, New Jersey. Atlantic City, built on a fragile barrier island, is one of the most flood-prone urban areas on the East Coast. With an average elevation of just four feet above sea level, even minor surges inundate streets, boardwalks and homes. The city currently experiences around 40 flood days per year, a number expected to skyrocket by 2050. Scientists predict daily high tide flooding could occur within decades if global emissions aren't curbed. What's even more troubling is the economic fragility of Atlantic City. As tourism struggles and gambling revenues dip, the city lacks resources to mount large-scale adaptation efforts. Its geographic vulnerability is paired with financial limitations, making it one of the most at-risk cities with the fewest tools to defend itself. Climate migration from Atlantic City may start well before the sea actually consumes it. It's not just sinking, it's slipping through the cracks. Very worrying. Next up, it's six, 
San Francisco, California. Famous for its hills, San Francisco might seem safe from sea level rise, but appearances are deceiving. Many of its most valuable and densely developed areas, like the Embarcadero, Mission Bay and parts of the financial district, are built on landfill at or near sea level. According to recent studies, the Bay Area could experience up to 24 inches of sea level rise by 2050, placing billions in infrastructure at risk. The Port of San Francisco, critical highways and even sections of tech headquarters could be impacted. Complicating matters are storm surges exacerbated by El Nino, which can drive water levels even higher. The city is investing in seawalls and green buffer zones, but adaptation is a race against time. As one of America's tech and innovation capitals, how San Francisco addresses this issue may become a model or a warning sign for the world. At five now, it's Charleston, South Carolina. Charleston blends southern charm with rising water. The city is one of the fastest growing metro areas in the southeast, but it's also among the most vulnerable. Charleston experiences dozens of flood events annually, many of which now occur during clear skies due to high tides. The city sits just a few feet above sea level and climate models suggest water could rise over two feet by 2050, enough to chronically flood historic districts, waterfront homes and parts of the airport. Its flat terrain and aging drainage system only makes matters worse. While the city has introduced a $3 billion adaptation plan, including seawalls and pump stations, implementation is slow. Tourism, a major economic driver, is also at risk. Charleston's cobblestone streets and antebellum homes may not survive another few decades unless bold action is taken, making it a living museum in danger of being lost. Let's go to four, it's Norfolk, Virginia. Norfolk is a city quite literally on the front lines of America's sea level crisis. Located at the mouth of the Chesapeake Bay, it's experiencing one of the fastest rates of sea level rise on the East Coast, nearly two inches per decade. Combine that with land subsidence and the city is sinking even faster than it's flooding. Norfolk is home to the world's largest naval base, making its vulnerability a national security concern. Roads, neighborhoods and military infrastructure flood frequently and NOAA projects chronic flooding in several zip codes by 2050. How worrying. Despite billions in proposed flood defenses and military-backed initiatives, Norfolk remains precariously exposed. For a city whose history is tied to the sea, the ocean is now becoming its greatest threat. Without major intervention, Norfolk could serve as America's cautionary tale for what happens when sea level rise collides with urban sprawl. And now at three, it's New York City, New York. The Big Apple is no stranger to disaster and Hurricane Sandy was just the beginning. NYC's coastal geography from Lower Manhattan to the Rockaways puts over 8 million residents and trillions in assets at serious risk. Since 1950, sea levels around the city have risen over 9 inches and projections suggest up to 30 inches by 2050. That's enough to push regular storm surges well beyond current barriers. During Sandy, parts of the subway flooded in hours, something climate experts fear could become a regular event without action. The city's $20 billion climate resilience plan includes elevating infrastructure, rebuilding coastlines and even artificial islands, but execution is a massive undertaking. As one of the world's most iconic cities, what happens to New York is symbolic of the planet's future. The fight to protect NYC is not just about one city, it's about what we value most – people, culture and resilience. At number two, it's New Orleans, Louisiana. New Orleans is already below sea level, and that's just the beginning. The city has always battled water, surrounded by lakes, rivers, and even swampland, but climate change is rapidly raising the stakes. Coastal erosion, stronger hurricanes, and rising seas are combining into a slow-moving catastrophe. Louisiana loses a football field of land every hour, and much of that is near New Orleans. Even after Katrina, vulnerabilities remain. 
Levies may hold today, but a major Category 4 or 5 hurricane, made more likely by warming oceans, could overwhelm them tomorrow. FEMA, NOAA and multiple scientific studies point to serious submersion risk by mid-century. Entire parishes could become unlivable. Local communities are trying to adapt, but some experts suggest planned retreat may be unavoidable. New Orleans stands as a living contradiction. Vibrant and vanishing, rich in culture but poor in time. If no solutions emerge soon, it could become America's first climate refugee city. And finally, at number one, it's Miami, Florida. No US city symbolizes the sea level crisis quite like Miami. It's not just vulnerable, it's actively sinking and flooding, even on sunny days. Known as sunny day flooding, this phenomenon is caused by rising tides that push through the porous limestone under the city. Miami's elevation averages just six feet and sea levels in South Florida have risen over eight inches since 1950 with projections of another two feet by 2050. This spells disaster for the city's infrastructure, real estate market and tourism industry. Billion dollar condos, highways and sewage systems are already under pressure. Efforts like elevating roads and installing pumps are underway, but experts warn this might just buy time, not solve the problem. The stakes are enormous, over 2.7 million people let that sink in. A booming economy and a cultural hub all stand in the path of encroaching water. If we don't rethink coastal development now, Miami could become the next Atlantis. The reality is clear. These cities are not just headlines. They're homes, communities and cultural landmarks facing an urgent threat. Sea level rise is no longer a distant possibility, it's happening now, yes now, and by 2050 the map of the United States could look drastically different. So what do you think? Can these cities be saved or is retreat inevitable? Let us know your thoughts in the comments below. And if you found this video eye-opening, I'm sure I did, make sure to hit the like button, subscribe for more in-depth travel and geography insights and tap the notification bell so you never miss a story that could impact the world or your next trip. Thanks for watching and stay curious.